Look at this crash. No other crash in PMG Drive looks anything like this. We just have parts exploding everywhere. So why is that? Find out in this video. Hey, this is YBR with Beam&G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Ibishu Bird. So this car is an automation export, and there are a lot of weird things about it that make it worth having its own video. So first off, when you look at the vehicle itself, if you look really closely at the body panels, you see there are just a lot of weird seams in the body that don't quite make sense. Like, why are those there? And then also, if you look on the inside, we have a red plastic chair in the inside for some reason. And then it, what appears to be the controls from like a motorcycle or something. And then also a regular steering wheel as well. So like there's just a bunch of weird things going on with this vehicle. And then when you start to drive it, things get even weirder. Because look at the front end here. All of these pieces are just dancing around. Like what in the world is up with this vehicle? So basically the vehicle's entire body is made using fixtures in automation. So normally when you have an automation vehicle, you start with a 3D body and then you just add some accessories on it. This whole body is just accessories piled onto each other to make it actually look like a regular vehicle. And normally when you crash an automation car, you think, oh, that crash looked okay, nothing special. This one, when you crash it, you think, wow, I didn't know a car could blow up that much when you crash it. It's absolutely spectacular to look at, and it's completely different from what a normal automation car looks like when you crash it. And I guess I should admit this. I don't normally look at the automation cars for Beam and G Drive. I only know about this car because somebody mentioned it to me, so I don't know how common it is for an automation car to explode like this, but it's the first one I've personally ever seen, and I had to make a video for it after I saw just one crash like that. It's just stunning to look at these crashes. It looks completely different than a normal crash in this game, yet they are still really, really interesting. One thing that's kind of funny about this car, though, is how fragile it ends up being. For example, if we just roll up into the wall at like 10 miles per hour, it will have significant damage. Just from that small tap, we had body parts flying all over the place. And for comparison purposes, normally that would just give you a small dent on your bumper and that's about it. But one thing that's neat is we could just keep on bumping these walls and more and more pieces fall off. Like there goes the roof. So now we just have a really unusual looking convertible. Here's another crash. Again, just at about 10 miles per hour and a few more pieces fall off. They just keep falling off little by little. And it seems like every impact is going to have a few more pieces fall off until eventually there should be nothing left, right? Well, that one's a little bit harder at about 15 miles per hour, but why don't we just keep increasing the speed? So now this next one will go like 25 miles per hour, and boom! The car literally explodes at only 25 miles per hour, and we have almost nothing left attached. We'll do one more regular style crash at a little bit higher speed, so we'll go maybe like 35 miles per hour here into there. There we go. Basically, every piece has fallen off at this point, except for the headlights which still somehow work. Headlights, y'all is crazy. All right, so now that you've seen a gradual collision, let's do one single collision that'll hopefully make the car completely explode. If we go down this road, we'll probably reach around 70, maybe 80 miles per hour. This car is rear wheel drive, I should mention, but it's also surprisingly hard to control for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why, but it's very sketchy to drive. Well, it does look sketchy as well, so maybe that's why. Anyways, we are going actually faster than I expected, almost 90 miles per hour. We're going to use a lot of slow-mo here, and I'm going to get the camera off of the car because we're going pretty fast. And wow! There are just so many pieces on this car that just explode in every direction. All right, guys, I got a question for you. How many parts actually make up this car, do you think? Leave a comment, and we're going to figure this out someday, I swear. But I honestly have no clue right now. And I doubt you'd be able to count them all. There's that many of them flying all over the place. And I love this too. We get this nice wreckage just everywhere surrounding us after the crash. It's beautiful. So there's what's left of the car. And now we're going to have some fun with the AI. So I'm going to spawn up some AI. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a regular crash into a regular car. And we're going to compare the difference in damage. Now my car, it'll probably be completely wrecked. The car I crash into, it's maybe going to have a scratch. We're going to find out. 
So I'm just gonna wait for the right time. I wanna like slide into them with the side impact. Oh, this is perfect. Right in the corner, just do a little slide. Oh my goodness. On my car, we have literally had the roof fall off. Their car, it's like, oh, we got some damage on the bumper. That's it. I have another idea. What if I just ever so slightly scrape a car? Like, this is gonna be the littlest impact I can do where it shouldn't do any damage to their car, but I wanna see what happens to my car. So here we go. Gonna get on the right side of this guy and then just the tiniest little scrape like that. <laughs> I do the littlest scrape on their car and like 20 body panels fall off of mine. And you look at their car, what happened to it? Nothing. It looks great. The only thing that looks different is it stole some of my body panels and it's taking it with them. All right, we gotta do another little scrape and try to make the car symmetrical. So this time we need to scrape on the left side of the vehicle. No room here. Whoa, slow down car. Getting a little sketchy there. All right, here we go, scrape. Yep, we just have a few body panels flying off. Not quite symmetrical, but again, the littlest little things will make pieces fall off. Look at this, they just keep coming off. Well, not that time, but every other time it did. Let's do a little bit harder on this scrape. So we're gonna get real close to them and... <laughs> the whole rear end just exploded. Ooh, I just had a good idea. How well do the body panels hold on if we drive off road? So we're gonna start by just driving on the dirt road and seeing how it copes with that. And if it copes okay here, we'll try some real off roading. And you can just see so much shaking. Specifically, if you look at the rear pillars, the one on the right and left, they are just bouncing all over the place. Sometimes they look like they're connected, other times they look like they're completely disconnected. Oh, now they are both just completely disconnected, although they sometimes just bounce back too. This car is simultaneously shaking to bits, but also holding on extremely well. It's amazing. But so far, I haven't seen any pieces fall off, although this is a bit easier in terms of off-roading. It's a relatively smooth dirt road. The hardest thing is just trying to keep the car going in a straight line. But either way, it held up more than I expected. From the things I saw earlier, I expected something like that to make pieces fall off. So we'll go ahead and just come to a stop in a very violent way that still had nothing falling off the car, actually, although crashing into that wall did get a couple of pieces to fall off. So what I want to do now, though, is I want to test this doing real off-roading. Whoops! There was a rock there, apparently. It was just completely covered by the bushes. <laughs> wow, okay. So we'll get a new car, and now we're going to try to off-road and see how well the body panels hold up. And I think off-roading like this, yeah, we already have pieces falling off from the bounciness of the terrain. Here's another big bounce, probably. Oh, yeah, pieces flying everywhere. We could probably literally follow the trail the car leaves in just body panels all over the place. You see them coming off little by little, and uh oh, here's a big jump. There's a lot coming off here. Oh, not that bad, actually. I think we're at the point where all the pieces that are lightly attached have fallen off, and the ones that are left are a little bit more secured to the vehicle. Although, as you saw earlier, not many body panels can hold up to a crash much higher than about 20 miles per hour. So even the ones that are more securely attached aren't really that secure as we lose a couple more there by hitting the corner of the road a little too hard. And I think every body panel that's left has earned a clap for me because these are the strong body panels that will not fall off. So take a second to admire him and say, hey, good job. All of you guys held on surprisingly well. And you do see it's surprisingly symmetrical, which makes me think these parts are just a bit stronger than all the other parts that have fallen off so far. So now let's go ahead and do one final crash. That's we'll finish off the Abishu bird. And then I have another test I want to do. And for that test, we're going to go ahead and just switch up maps, get a little bit of variety into things. So here's the crash. Lots of damage. And you know what? There's still a good bit of body panels attached, even though we've been tossing body panels all over the place. We still got probably another 30 left, it looks like. It's really hard to tell because they are just stacked so deep. It could be 10, it could be 30. The only way to know is to do yet another crash and see how many fall off. So we gotta do a nice big crash going like 60 miles per hour, flying into here. Got like four more flying off here. And here's the big hit. And I saw like probably at least 20 pieces plus another five falling off. So 30 was probably a pretty good guess. And there is what the vehicle looks like with Basically, every body panel flown off. <laughs> that chair in the middle is just so ridiculous. Anyways, I'm going to change maps and set it up where we have a bunch of Ibishu birds as the AI and my car. 
All right, so we have my Bishu bird right here, and then we have a half dozen other ones driving around. And I tried to change the color of the car. Unfortunately, that is not possible. So we will have a white on white collision, which does make it hard to see which parts are from what car. But either way, it should still be really interesting to look at. And I see the perfect opportunity here. We're going to have just a huge pile of cars. First impact, huge explosion, and we ain't done. Second impact, get that third and fourth car. Oh, my goodness there is so much junk just all over the place my frame rate is actually lower because there's so many parts scattered all over the place wow that was amazing but i want to do a little bit simpler crash to see what that looks like with some slow motion so we're just going to do a nice basic head-on collision with nothing fancy going on once we're up to speed so that seems pretty good target acquired you can't dodge me i'm coming for you and I think with this car, the camera will shake on impact. So I'm going to go ahead and separate the camera. And then three, two, one, go. You can see just how much faster I was going than them. And oh, man. These crashes do not get old. They're just the most explosive crashes I have ever seen. They're beautiful. I have absolutely no idea what's going on when I see them. But they're like works of art. And kind of ironically, I just noticed, this is the one car where I don't care what it looks like after the crash. I don't care one bit. I just want to see the body panels explode everywhere. That's the best part. And already, here's another head-on collision, but this time without any slow motion. And I think I like it a lot better with slow motion. So we're going to do one more head-on collision with the slow motion because it was so beautiful. You got to see it twice. And I want to be going about the same speed, so about 60 miles per hour, because that's highway speed, so I know that's enough to cause some explosive damage. That first car, we weren't quite going fast enough, but now we are. So the next car I see for the head-on collision, we will collide. Although, there apparently aren't any for a while. I think there's one way down there at the end of the road, so we'll be going nice and fast. And if I did that dumb thing where I put a clip at the start of the video, this would be a really good one, and I'd be like, look at this crash. No other crash in BMG Drive looks anything like this. We just have parts exploding everywhere. So why is that? Find out in this video. I think that's why I love them so much though, is because it is just so different from what I'm used to seeing. Usually it's like, yeah, the car deformed, it looked fine. This one's like, I don't know what happened with the car, but boom, parts go everywhere. Monkey brain go, <laughs> that's cool. And I also love the AI just driving over the debris and it does sometimes affect them. You'll see him like bump over it. Yeah, you see that guy? He just pushed some and stuff. I would try to drive over the debris, but I'm a little too damaged to drive very well. So I want to do another big pileup crash, but this time without slow motion. And along the way, I'm going to try to bump into the cars as I drive and see if that causes damage, just like the dude in front of me did. He did exactly what I want. Now that was interesting. So it looks like the collisions on the side of this vehicle aren't too good. We kind of just clip into each other just like that. Yeah, and then the wheels hit each other. That's interesting and kind of unexpected. So that kind of sucked, but the good news is we got a nice crash right here. So full speed at him. And just again, hundreds of parts flying everywhere. Although I think the head on collisions are definitely a little bit better. But now I want to do another test. Oh, hello, car to my left. How are you doing? So, anyways, for this next test, we're going to head over to Grid Map. And this is a pretty simple test. I just want to see will the car fall apart if we try to do a suspension test. And I really think. It will shatter if we try to do this. So here's the first test on the easy side of the suspension test. Any car can do this normally, and it actually held up. It jiggled around like jello, but we only lost a couple of pieces. That was really surprising. All right, now for round two, we're gonna go on the harder side of the suspension test, and we're gonna see, can it survive this? Oh, it's shaking, oh, I see pieces flying. Oh, yeah, it just exploded. So it gets a little steeper at the end. When you hit the steeper section, that's when everything just flies off. And since we're already on grid map, we'll get a brand new car. And we're going to try to do a jump. And I want to try to make this jump go as smooth as possible so we lose as little body parts as possible. But this is a pretty big jump. So going about 35 miles per hour into the air. Nice. All right, that wasn't so bad. That was also a really smooth landing. I did that at the perfect speed and we still lost like a half dozen pieces of the car. So now we're gonna do it faster. 
And this time it's going to be too fast. We are going to overshoot the jump and do a really hard landing. So we're going about 50 miles per hour on entry. And oh no, this is bad news for the car. <laughs> wow. That got every single body panel off of it, I'm pretty sure, with just one simple impact. The engine still wants to work. Unfortunately, nothing else about the car does. So to finish this up, we got to go and go to Leap of Death and do the most explosive Leap of Death that you've ever seen. And now would be a good time to mention, by the way, there is only one configuration for this vehicle. And that's why I haven't brought it up. But there you go. You can see it now. So that's the one we're going to choose for Leap of Death. And the one question I have here is, will it fall apart when we hit the ramp? Because that can be a harsh transition. We lost a couple of pieces already. Oh, but the ramp was nice and smooth, although we just dropped another piece. But it's mostly intact for Leap of Death. That's what matters is most of the parts are here to explode off on this first impact. And we are definitely going to use slow motion here. I think the slow motion will be great. So I'm going to go 16 times slow motion. And there we go. The parts are all falling off. But I like that they're all still grouped together. So we can really watch as the parts fly through the air. Because this is going to work like a ramp to shoot us forward, I bet. This is going to work great as long as the camera doesn't do that. Stop that camera. Oh, perfect. Look at that. You can clearly see all of the individual parts that have flown off. Quick, count them. How many parts make up this car? Because I genuinely have no idea. Wow. That really is beautiful. I don't know why, but for some reason I love crashes like this. Oh, and that is really interesting. So the parts themselves will actually fly faster down Leap of Death than the frame. Interesting. Anyways, I think that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR, and remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how many parts are in the Abishu Bird. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.